Hey everybody, it's Joel Toppin here. Thought I'd take a uh, quick look here at Atlantic Chase. This is the vast module I'm working on. So I'm trying to achieve a couple of things in this, kind of show off the game a little bit and also uh, test out the module and explain a little bit about how the Vassal module is going to work. And so uh, what you see here is the basic map to the game. There's the uh, This is the main map board. The Vassal module will not have a zoned hex grid, and the reason for that is if you look at the hex grid on your screen, you'll notice that it is not oriented uh, in the ordinary fashion. It seems to be canted maybe like 25 degrees or so. Um, so it's not something that Vassal is set up to uh, be able to mimic. So there's no zoning. Things are not going to snap into hexes in this particular uh, module. There is a couple small maps that are used in scenarios that zoom in on the North Sea. Those are accessible from the toolbar, uh, Norwegian Sea. You can also zoom way in on these. You can zoom in and out using the... Uh, the toolbar button or if you've got a uh, keyboard I think control and mouse wheel on a PC or command and mouse wheel on your uh, Mac. Task force displays are also accessible from the toolbar so you can see that that's where your reinforcement markers will be and if you ever move them someplace else a control R will send them right back to their home base. Uh, we have those also for the uh, the British task forces or Royal Navy task forces, those are there. The button on the toolbar that says remove action markers, it's going to remove certain markers that you're going to place. I'll show you in just a minute where those are and how to place those. But um, at the end of every action, uh, you'll need to hit this button. It'll, it'll just take care of all those markers. If there was a battle fought, any torpedoes spent, um, I think it gets rid of smoke gets rid of torpedo markers, any combat assignment markers that you're going to use probably for play by email, uh, those will get removed by that button there. There is also then a single red die button, a single blue die button for the Royal Navy and the Kriegsmarine, a two die basic button that's going to be used in, in combat situations uh, or, or whenever you're going to need to uh, uh, try to seize initiative, and then a three die button which you'll use also for gunnery. And uh, so that's what's going on on your display. The, the player aids are all included in the, the game. So you're getting everything in this one. Uh, pages 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the quad fold uh, play aid. And then you have the uh, advanced battle. Uh, the four pages of that are also included. I didn't break them apart because, frankly, that's just uh, way more work than it's worth. And they're all here, so uh, I didn't really see the need for that. There's also the campaign game, British Force Pool, Play Aid, etc. Um, so it's all one stop shopping for the Play Aids. It's all there. The stuff on the map is all been righted for us by the artist. So it's right side up here up the upper left hand corner, also at the lower right hand corner. Those are all upright. So just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and set up the op uh, for Berlin scenario from the uh, playbook page or the two player page game playbook page 15 so what we're going to do is we're going to make some trajectories when you open up the pieces it may not expand properly so you're going to have to probably resize things a little bit so i'm just going to drag this apart just to show everything um, you can create an infinite number of these pieces by the way so you know bear in mind that you only want one of each ship but they're all in here Sometimes I'll create four spools for games like this, but this one I kind of felt like I'd just go ahead and use this approach. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up some trajectories for the Royal Navy. So we're going to go ahead and click on Royal Navy, and then that expands to the ships, sub uh, tabs, stations and trajectories, leaders, markers unique to the, uh, the Royal Navy. Uh, convoy destinations are in here. Now, I don't know, maybe I, I might need to relabel re that. The actual convoy ships are in the ships, and they're listed under Other. So there's your DD Squadron, your Convoy, and your Shore Battery Markers. And again, you can create an infinite number of these. So what I'm going to do is click on uh, the trajectories, and we're going to take the tan marker here, and we're going to make a trajectory from New York, and we're going to stretch it all the way to Liverpool. Now to do this, if you use your arrow keys, you can rotate these markers all around like so. They, they'll, they'll shift quite a few angles, and so that makes them pretty flexible. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it like so, and then, yeah, like so. And then you do a Control-C, 
and it'll duplicate. Control C, drag, duplicate. Control C, drag, duplicate. Once you get the hang of that, this, this actually goes, I think, faster than in the physical game where uh, sometimes the pieces can be a little clumsy, especially when you have to manage the, the pieces with stripes, but the stripe is only on one of the four facings. So, you know, only 25% of the time am I actually putting it the right side up the first time. So we'll just kind of drag these out. I think they pretty much just go straight out until they get to the O in ocean, then they start to curve. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and bend it a little bit. Reposition it for aesthetic pleasing purposes. I think it comes to here. Yep. Doom, and then doom, and then Oops, don't. Now these are non-stacking pieces, so you can um, uh, you can reposition these as needed. Uh, they won't stick to one another, so there you go. That shows you just how easy it is to create tra trajectories in the game. Now we'll go ahead and do a two-striper from Halifax again to Liverpool uh, as part of this setup. Now let's imagine for a second that we're in the middle of gameplay and I want to turn this into a station. If you right-click on a trajectory, You'll see the options to rotate, clone, delete, uh, replace with station is what we're going to want. That's how you do that. But you can also place markers. You can make, place active task force, coordinating task force, engagement, search, contact, intel. All of that can be placed here. And if you learn the right-click codes with your keyboard, it'll happen really fast. Obviously, right-clicking to rotate, you know, to, what is it, 15 degrees or something like that, uh, every time you want to rotate, that's that's inconvenient. So uh, using the keyboard shortcuts is definitely the way to go. But we're going to go ahead and right-click on it and tell it to replace it with a station. And then we'll just go ahead and delete the other markers in that trajectory. And so that's how that works. Just creating the station does not necessarily uh, remove all the other trajectories. So be aware of that. You're going to have to manually do that, just like you would in a physical game, have to manually... Uh, take pieces off of the board. So we're not doing everything for you. <laughs> so that's how you do it. Now let's imagine you have a station set up here and you want to replace it with a trajectory. It's the same deal. It will orient it um, just how it is in the pieces display. So you'll have to, you know, kind of uh, reposition things. A nice thing about how I've got the clone set up is that it will uh, match when you clone it, it'll match the rotation of the piece that you're cloning it from, which makes the drawing of trajectories really, really fast and easy. If you're just super anal about getting everything, you know, lined up just so, um, like I am, <laughs> uh, you'll find that sometimes you have to drag it away in order to get it in there just, just so, like, like there. It doesn't want to snap too. So I'll move it out of the way, and then I'll there. That's that's where I want it. So there you go. It's not going to be perfect, but I guarantee it's not going to be perfect in your physical games either. And in some ways, when it gets a little crowded, this is going to be a lot easier to use. So there you go. That's that's the setup for that particular uh, uh, trajectory. And so that gives you a sense of what you can do. And again, in the right-click codes, if you do a Control-A, that will mark it as the active task force. You can also rotate these markers, which may be useful if you're doing you know play-by-email or something uh, and you need to mark something very, very specific. You can arrow it around uh, however you like. And uh, and then you can do your, let's see, let's say we want to do an Intel marker, put an Intel marker in something, you can do that as well. Now, when you hit the Remove Action Markers button on the toolbar, it'll get rid of all those markers that were just for that operation. It's not going to kill your Intel markers because those don't get removed nearly so easy. In fact, these are probably the stickiest markers in the game. So to get rid of these, you just you know right click it on it or um, and choose delete, or you just do a Control D on it, and that'll get rid of them. So there you go. Let's go ahead and put some ships in a task force. Let's do some for the Kriegsmarine. We're going to put the uh, cruiser Hipper and the pocket battleships and the heavy cruisers are all in one tab here. So we'll put the uh, the Hipper in here, and then we're going to put the Shear in there, and then we're going to find the Nisenau and the Scharnhorst. These two are just wicked evil twins, man. These They don't look like much, but these two ships can cause a whole heck of a lot of damage to uh, the Allies. It <laughs> really uh, doesn't look like they have much to offer, but 
trust me, they can they can pack quite a wallop. And we're going to go ahead and find their leaders. And I think we have Luchins. So we're going to put Luchins with the Scharnhorst. It will stick with him, so if you don't want to stick it directly on him and have him sticky, you can just kind of move him off to the side. I think they rotate. So if you're like me and you're like, hey, I like it to look more like a diamond, you can do that. That's just my own personal weird preference there. Uh, and then Admiral Raider is going to start on the map. He should go in keel. So we'll just go ahead and stick him down there like so, and that's how that would work. Now, when it comes to setting these things up, let me go ahead and set up kind of a battle situation. Let me fill in a couple of the Royal Navy uh, units here. So we'll open up the Royal Navy tab. We'll go over to the ship's tab, sub tab, and then we want some cruisers. The cruisers are oriented in a list because there's so many of them. They are in alphabetical order. It should make them a little bit easier to find if it's not a little bit quicker. I think it's quicker to pull them out when they're all just there. But uh, in this case, I thought it would be easier. So... We're going to go ahead and put the Sheffield and the Norfolk into this task force. Now let's imagine by some terrible twist of fate. Now nah, let's not put them against those. Let's go ahead and put these two guys into a battle situation. Let's imagine that they got in battle with uh, Admiral Shear. So what you can do is when you right-click on a ship, there's lots of options for them. And it's going to differ whether they're allied or they're oriented with the Kriegsmarine. You can delete it, but the delete involves a control alt shift delete instead of just a control D. Uh, doing an alt control shift D is going to make it harder for you to accidentally delete a piece. Okay, the only time you're going to need to do that is when something is sunk and you just want to kill it, get it out of the game. Uh, I recommend because sometimes there's points going to be required, just take your sunk ships and put them on the map just kind of off to the side. There's certainly room for it in hexes that you're not going to use. You could stick them up in Greenland, for example, for the British. Maybe stick them in France for the, the, uh, the Kriegsmarine. I don't have a window for that. I didn't really feel a need for it. So back to these guys. Right-clicking on it, you got your options to rotate them, but they're going to only rotate to four facings. So you can rotate it for... Uh, and this is going to be more important when you're playing the advanced game battle rule or the advanced battle rules, which I highly recommend. They're super cool. So um, that's why they have a rotation function. You can send them back to task force display by using the control 1 through 0 on your, uh, on your keyboard. You can also send it to the battle uh, display by control B if they're going to go into the far zone, which is the typical place you're going to put them. Sometimes there's a surprise situation and one side is going to show up in the near zone. And so a control shift B will send them to that location. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just take these guys and do a control B, normal battle situation, close out that task force display, and you'll see that they both have piled on top of each other here. So we'll double click, disengage them, and separate them. We'll go ahead and take the Kriegsmarine, and we'll do the same thing with the Shear. And we'll send him control B, and you'll notice that the German will always show up down here. And the British will always show up here. Why do I do that? Because that's probably how you're going to play in a physical game. Uh, sitting across the table from one another. It just seemed natural, so that's why I did it that way. And there you go. Now, once you're in a battle situation, if you're using the advanced game, uh, they're going to automatically be in a closing uh, or, or chasing uh, uh, scenario. Uh, excuse me, closing or fleeing situation in terms of attitude. And so you'll, you'll need to orient them accordingly. But let me just show you how this works here. You'll notice that there's fewer options for the Kriegsmarine because they have fewer task forces to send things to. Uh, there are some right-click functions to place a hit marker. Now, obviously, whoops, on the, the shear, for example, on his front side, if you do a Control-H to put a hit marker, normally you wouldn't do that because one hit's going to flip this bad boy. So Control-F will flip him over, in theory. Right, come on. There we go. Okay, this one is not flipping over, so we're going to have to figure out what's going on with the shear. I think that that is a bug on that particular piece, so let me go back over here and grab the hipper. Okay, hipper will flip over. So I'm not sure what's going on with the shear. We'll have to fix that one. This is how we find bugs, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's go ahead, actually, and not use the hipper. Let's go ahead and flip him back. And we'll put him back into the task force that he came from. So when I did that, he disappeared from here. 
and he showed up here. So there he is. Let's go ahead and put in one of the other pocket battleships. Because they're all the same, really. In terms of actual ratings, there's no difference between the Graf Spey and the Shear and the Litzau. So let's put my favorite. Let's put the Graf Spey, and we'll just delete the defective Shear. All right, normally you wouldn't put a hit marker on him, but because when he's flipped over, he can take two hits, uh, I just felt like just go ahead and globally putting that hit marker option. So even though some ships, you won't really feel a need for it. There you go. So that's what's going on with that. Uh, what else can you do with these guys? You can put a smoke marker down with him uh, by right click. So you can also uh, do a torpedo attack marker. Even if the ship does not have the torpedo symbol, that option will be there. Players are expected to know and abide by the rules. So, you know, don't just because the, the vassal module will let you do something doesn't mean that it's, it's uh, legal to do so. So, again, play by the rules uh, first, and uh, if they contradict the vassal module, go with the rule book, okay? If uh, you want to place an evasive marker, you're usually going to have these in your uh, task force display, but they're, they're uh, placeable by right-click function on your ships. So that's how you get those guys. Uh, attitude marker and combat sign. When you do an attitude marker, it will automatically flip it down. Now, you'll notice this put the uh, the evil Nazi uh, uh, symbol down here in the lower right-hand corner, but you can still see it says closing. Your opponent in a live game would only see the, uh, the Kriegsmarine flag, and it would say attitude. Now, if I come over here to the Norfolk, and I do the same thing, except I do a, uh, was it Control-A? If I just do a Control-A on it, You'll see it puts the Royal Navy Ensign on it. So that's how you place these things. So they're hidden from your opponent, but then you can just do a control equals or control minus on your keyboard to cycle through the different attitudes. There's running, closing, and acquire. So you just cycle which one you want, tell your opponent, hey, I'm done. And then if you click on the button on the toolbar, reveal attitudes, it will reveal everybody's attitude at once. And I set it up so that Technically speaking, I think you will be able to flip over your opponent's markers. Um, you're not supposed to do that, so no cheating. But it was one way to make this button work without a whole lot of headache on my side of things. So just you know, play by the rules, be considerate, uh, no cheating. All right. So <laughs> that's the story with those guys. And then you can just uh, delete those things. I think. Okay, I got to make it so that we'll delete those. So I need to make add that to that button. So this button here really should remove their attitudes as well, but that's what's going on with these things. We'll just get them out of the way for now. If you're playing an email game, it's conceivable you'll have a situation where you need to identify who you're firing at. And some battles could have a lot of uh, you know participants, so you might need to pre-designate who's shooting at who. If you do a control P for place, uh, a label on these guys, a combat designation label, you can uh, go ahead and place a, a yellow label that will happen on the ship, and then you can just, it, the default is A, but you can set it to whatever you want, and then say, I'm going to mark that he is firing at him like so. And if I had another ship like the Prinzoigen here, I could do a control P on him and tell it to do a B. And then maybe it would be easier for me just to do a control C and clone that marker and slide it over here. These markers will not stick to the counters. They'll just kind of hover on top of them. So that's what's going on with those markers, and those are removed with the uh, remove action markers. At the, end of a, at the end of a battle, you're finishing up an action anyway, so it's going to wipe out all the action markers on the hex grid, and it'll wipe out uh, battlefield markers here from the, the battle display. So that's basically how the module works. There's really not a lot of fancy bells and whistles uh, to it. I just have to figure out what was going on with the Admiral Shear and uh, make sure that the, the back image is appropriately set so it'll, it'll flip over as uh, it's supposed to do. And I think that's about it. I think, oh, and I think this button here is supposed to remove, I'll need to make that remove the attitude markers and make sure it's removing smoke. I know it removes the uh, torpedo markers as well from ships. So that's what's going on with those guys. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's it. Just making sure these are all the right on <laughs> the opposite side. No more surprises. So that the, the module is meant really it's ideal, you know, for playing face to face, but I've also taken into consideration I think this game will work by email reasonably well. 
So I've, I've also set up some tools in there uh, trying to think ahead of time for how you might use that. Uh, some markers are only found on the, uh, uh, the track here, and they can all be flipped over to their red side. So you can see the Royal Navy side versus the Kriegsmarine side. Weather marker is located where it's supposed to be, operation marker. I didn't cant them to line up with the track. You can do that um, in the physical game, but just, I don't know, I just left them like that. Battle round markers. Oh, I should show you under markers up here. Most of these are, are placeable by right-click function, except the fog marker. That's something that might happen as a result of advanced battle rules. And uh, so that will show up. It's, it's in the, uh, the markers tray. Advanced game has, this is where you can find your attitude markers. I believe the left is Kriegsmarine and the right is Royal Navy. The only way you're going to find that out is actually by dragging it on the map and then hiding it with a control, come on, control shift H is what it is to uh, to place those. But I've, I've got it set up by right click function so that automatically places the correct marker. Uh, oil slick and all of the advanced game um, tokens that you're going to place for, for certain damage situations or for snafu situations, they're all found in here. These are flippable, so some of these you'll want to flip it over to the reverse side to get the, the appropriate image uh, for that result. For example, fire, and you got to flip that thing over to, and you can do it in the tray, by the way. I don't recommend hiding maskable pieces in here, but you can flip markers over to see what's on the other side. Just click it and do Control F. I think you can right click on them too to see what it is. So there's your, your different flooding. Some of these don't flip over at all. I think the bridge does. Batteries don't. So it's basically mainly fire, flooding, and the, uh, the bridge that'll flip over. Okay, that is pretty much the module, and I hope you enjoy this. We'll try to get it out to you guys by the end of the weekend. I still want to run some tests. Oh, scenarios. There are a truckload of scenarios, and I'll give you your choice. Okay, I could spend a month putting these scenario files together, or I could just give you the module like this weekend, and y'all can just make the scenario files whenever, and they don't take long to make. Um, some of them, some of them will take some time to make because there's a lot more pieces, but uh, you, you can make them up yourself, save them. If you send them to me, I can include them in the module. Uh, just whenever you make a scenario file, make sure you resign. There's no need to sign in as a player. There's no hidden information. So uh, just sign in as observer to set them up. I don't think you need anything besides that. And uh, and then we can, we can eventually get them accumulated and put them in the module. But I kind of feel like Players want the module now, and the scenario setups, they can wait till later. They're a lot of, it takes a lot of time to put them together. And then if I find bugs, you know, sometimes then you got to redo the setup because um, the pieces that are in the old setup maybe have a flaw with them, and it's, it's complicated, y'all. It's just complicated. Uh, this one here will probably be easier to update scenarios than, say, my coin modules and such. That's another reason for putting all the pieces in the tray here rather than having them set up on the board. Those are the ones that you have problems updating a scenario to a newer module. So there's a lot, there's just a ton of mini scenarios that I haven't set up. There's a campaign game. There's all the, the solitaire scenarios. It's just a truckload of scenarios and I don't want to spend like a month doing all of these files in all my spare time. So I'll leave that up to the host of Vassal players to if they want that in the module Go ahead and create them. I can put them in, or another uh, fan can go ahead and put them in the module at a later time. So hope you enjoy the video. Hope you enjoy the module. I'll be coming to you real soon, and we'll see you again uh, next time.